Someone who's played at an MVP level every year since his second season has been Luka. Correct. Luka Doncic. You look at the Mavericks right now, and it just looks like a they, mess. they need to give him more than what they've been offering him. The, the roster sucks. It's not a good roster. No. Luka is, right now, he's at a 42% usage percentage, which is on pace to be the, the highest all time. They signed Kemba Walker. Yippee. Fuck. And Nico Harrison, the GM of the Mavs, already came out with the with an article. There was an article written about him that he said his knee's not good. <laughs> he said somebody asked him about the knee, and he was like, yeah, it's not good. Like, you know, we're not going to lie to you, it's not good. But this is the best Kemba's felt in the last couple of years. So this is just a shot for him to try to get back in the league. <laughs> so hopefully it goes well for Kemba. Uh-huh. But even at his best, you look at Kemba with the Mavericks, and I'm not going to say Charlotte best, but best case scenario in this situation. He's still a defensive liability, and you can't trust him game to game on the offensive side of the ball because he's just been through so many injuries. That's unfortunate. And I was watching an NBA Today segment, and Woj said that the Mavericks should, uh, you know, they should look out for if Luka wants to leave eventually. He warned the Mavericks, and I can't blame him. In that, in that, uh, in that segment, he talked about a lot of their blunders, and I went in depth on them. The Mavericks blunders since Luka Doncic has been with them. Mm -hmm. This is all the trades, the drafts, and the free agent signings. So the trades, in 2018, they made the Chris Osporzingis trade. I thought that was very good in the moment, but he could never stay healthy with Dallas, and he was a defensive liability in his later years in Dallas. 2020, I thought this was, at at the moment, I, I was shocked this trade was made when they traded Seth Curry. For Josh Richardson and Tyler Bay to the Sixers. I thought that coming off that bubble run, Seth Curry played amazing in the playoffs. I was kind of shocked he was traded given how great of a floor spacer he is. And then this year, they traded KP for Dinwiddie and Bertans. I I like that. And they also traded for Christian Wood, a bunch of like role players. Free agency. You sign Reggie Bullock. I like that. But they extend Tim Hardaway Jr. to a four-year $74 million deal. At 18 mil a season, which I think is an overpay for him. You think? I do think mm. so. When they give it to him, though, that was when after he had that really good Clippers series. It might have. I, I just, I'm not aware of when it was exactly. For his role, I'm fine with it. He's a how much is that? 18, 18 mil a year. That's he's averaging horrible. 14 points. Joe Harris gets paid 18. That's what I'm saying. That's not horrible. But he's not consistent as Joe Harris. Is Joe he's Harris consistent? He's a, he's yeah. Joe it. Harris led the league in three point percent. Oh no. Without a doubt, that brother can stroke it. Yeah. In the playoffs, he's not, but in, yeah, in regular season, he I is. I think that's what it was. I think Hardaway shot lights out against the Clippers, Max. and that's why he got paid. But their biggest fumble is that Mr. Brunson. before the season, I mean, Jalen Brunson, this is before the 21 2022 season. Yeah. So before Brunson, you know, shocked everybody, went on his playoff run, they could have extended Jalen Brunson four years, $56 million. My God. Which would have been 14 mil a year. Still. For a guy who's an all-star level player. He wanted to renegotiate in January. The Mavericks didn't want to. He played so well, he managed to get $26 million on the open market from the Knicks. And you could say that year. that is one of the better investments the Knicks have ever made, especially at the pouring up position. He's playing at an all-star level. You didn't bring oh, back perfect. Brunson, which now moves Dinwiddie into the starting role. Yep. JaVale McGee was a terrible signing. I thought it would have been much better because of the rim protection. But this year, he's minus 13. This year, when he's on the floor, the Mavericks are minus 13.8 points per 100 possessions when he's in the lineup. So he hasn't been a good fit with them. And then you look at the trade, and you look at the drafts. 2018, Luka and Jalen Brunson, great draft. 2020, Josh Green was a good pick. But since 2011, this is the Mavericks track record in the draft. It's been Jordan Hamilton, Tyler Zeller, traded Olenek for Shane Larkin, Justin Anderson, and Dennis Smith Jr. This isn't a team that drafts well. They don't make smart signings. They sign Chandler Parsons to that huge overpay and Harrison Barnes off of Golden State. They have two signings that are big-time signings to wing position players, and they just don't make smart trades at all. I, I just feel like they're wasting Luka. They are. You look at the assertion of talent that Luka has, there's no talent on the Mavericks. You cannot definitively say one of these players is the second-best player on the Mavs. Money, you can't say that? No, because some nights Christian Wood's better. It's really, some nights Dorian Finney-Smith is playing great. 
you know, you can't definitively say somebody's the second best player. And I feel like this feels a lot like LeBron's tenure in Cleveland, where a team is failing to build around him. We just seen Luka make the WCF with this. With, added with Brunson, I'll, I'll say that. But Luka needs more help. And I, I feel like if things don't start turning around, I hope I'm not overreacting on this, but I would like Luka to explore options because he deserves to be on a team that's contending for a championship. <sighs> Shit, I thought LeBron teams was a little better. The, the Mo Williams, the Lante West team teams. Was fake, right? Larry Hughes, oh, yeah, Ginger Hill Gossett. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. were slight. Like, even Larry Hughes was coming off a 20-point per game season. So these dudes right here, listen. It's a shame because Dorian Finney-Smith was supposed to be really the good. The problem, and you, you, you made a great point, they don't have any talent. And when you, we talk about talent, we talk about Jalen Brown. Zach Levine, you know, like guys who can go get one. Like Kyrie Irving. Like an all-star, like yeah, a number like two Even Chris Middleton to a degree. Like somebody who can you can give the ball to, he can go get you one, he can go make a play. I don't think these guys are bad players. They're just, like right now, I think Finney Smith, he's missing. Bullock, I, pro- I, pro- I think he's probably become a bad player at this point. He hasn't been able to hit at all this year. But I think a lot of these guys are role players that just right now, when you have role players that are fit to a specific role and they can't, they're not hitting threes, they're gonna look worse than what they actually are. I think these guys, like I think Dorian Finney Smith can be a role player in the championship team, but like also just right now, they're not hitting and they don't have any other role. Defend, hit the three. Get get open for Lucas. So when you're not hitting, you can and you're not assigned to do anything else, you look worse than what you actually are. Actually are. I do think they need another bucket. You know, Lucas doing everything he can. You know, we saw Cleaver make some boneheaded mistakes it's the last two games at the end of the uh, game. You see Luca getting real frustrated. Luke is an MVP candidate. He's a generational talent. He, he's going to be able to give you that. Like like we said, he can backpack an offense willingly by himself. But at the same time, you need another guy. But he, like, you need another guy to, to that's be able to make plays for others and make play for themselves. Dallas is a tough situation because even with the Dirk run when they won a championship, there was no other All Star. There was a bunch of really good players and then role players. You know, there wasn't no major high level All Star like Jason Terry was good. But he wasn't no all-star play. He can give you an all-star level night, but he wasn't an all-star player. Same with Jason Kidd. He was more of a, a veteran in leadership. He didn't give you wow numbers. That is a Hall of Fame but player, he, though. He was important. Like, like that, He wasn't no, him. No, of yeah. course, of course. Like, Tyson Chandler Tyson was an amazing D- defensive DPOI, player. But he couldn't score is Facts. what I'm saying. Like, still, Jason Terry had a great no, run. That team was great. Yeah, That's they they I don't want to minimize the team. They were a great really team. Really Dirk backpack. Dirk backpack. He backpacked. Offensively, at least. Offensively, yep. That's a rare thing to happen. You know, AI... Backpacked. Do you LeBron, think it'll ever happen 07? again? It's, it's rare. I don't think it'll ever. If happen we know, again. if you look at the line, look. Given the talent in the NBA Correct. right now, it won't happen if, if oh, you yeah. have talent like this. Yeah. Like for example, Dorian Finney-Smith and Reggie Bullock. What they are to Dallas is similar to what Mikel Bridges and Cam Johnson are for Phoenix. To a lesser degree, yes. But Mikel is way better than any of those guys. Sure. Cam I would even say better. Cam jo- Johnson is better. And then you have guys like Chris Paul and Aiden. So you have your superstar, you have your stars, and then you have the role players. Some respect Dallas just too. has the superstar and Nothing then, else. like, ro- role, play- players, role players. Yeah, but so. they're not high-level role players. Like, they aren't the first three picks you're taking if you're taking a role player draft. Like, you know, I'm going with <laughs> Mikel Bridges. Role player draft's funny. I'm going like with Finney, Lonzo like, Ball. Like Alex Smith. Caruso. I'm going like Smith. Austin I don't know. Marcus Smart. Os- Car- Alex Caruso Austin or Dorian Finney-Smith is close. I oh. think Finney-Smith over Austin Reeves. I do. Okay, uh, but I, I Alex do. Caruso, PJ Tucker, can't forget about him. PJ mm. Tucker probably in can. this little tier. Um, uh, role do, player, do right? Do we want to highlight yeah. some of these Saying horrible that Mavericks loss? What do you mean? S- no, I was saying like, average and four. He said he, he said I'm saying it nicely that PJ Tucker is a role player. No, yeah, he's he actually the role player. I know, he's but he's, no, he's saying in 2022. Very, very, have you guys ever? Have you guys ever questioned maybe that I love PJ Tucker because he's a role player exactly like that? He plays his role perfectly. He does. And he's the heart and soul of teams he when he goes there. Do you think Philly's no disappointed? He loves with minimizing PJ Tucker. Do you think Philly's disappointed? At this point in time? Philly? Do you think they're disappointed in PJ uh, Tucker? Good player, good starter. Just you know. I think they are, man. They probably are. That's all I'm saying. Oh, That's Philly. all I'm saying. Wait, you? Oh uh, no, you said you. Do you think Tucker is disappointed in Philly? I'm saying, do you think Philly is disappointing 
disappoint. You know what I mean? He yeah. takes on the best offensive player every single night and does his best, and he's actually in the top ten in, in I defense. Know, defensively, he's, he's been great. I mean, that, that's what he was just, brought in to do. He also has four games of zero points. Just, we have to stop. That's like, not his role. One time. That's like, not his role. You can't be four on five on offense, though, bro. He's the best corner three point shooter. That's not his role. What's up, Matisse Stivel? We put we put boom fantasy. We put boom boom fantasy props. I make PJ Tucker's lines. It's like three and a half points over under point five threes over under. Points, rebounds, assists, nine and a half. He score three. He's one of those players that if you're looking at the box score, you won't appreciate him. That's all I'll say. Bro, There's some guys like that in the league. Zero point. Ah. Zero is crazy. Zero, four times. Yeah. Okay. And doesn't complain. So <laughs> another. <laughs> let me. <laughs> so, does, he misses layups. He's the one who's. He the, can't he really, got to complain to he himself. Can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> he can't. Let me ask you. You said they don't trade well. You're saying with while Luca's been on the team, because. You said it yourself. You were a fan of the KP trade, as was I. No, yeah, I like the KP, KP. trade. Now trading him away. Oh no, I was. You a fan also of both. were a fan. So when? He, so what other trades have they made? The I Seth never. Curry one. The Seth Curry trade. The Seth was Curry not was great. bad. I mean, they had to trade KP. It just wasn't a good fit. But is that an? Is I that thought it was because a good trade of, though. Is that How because KP's, of KP? KP's ball in the show. That's the question. He is is that ball. because so of KP? Is that Dinwiddie deal bad? Sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's not because. Yeah. Continue. Is that because of KP? Or is that because of Luca that it didn't work? It's both. It's, what about and the coach? that's not an indictment on Luca. the coach. Oh, for sure, for sure. And I want to touch on that because there's this growing narrative. Luca has a lot of narratives around him, right? And one of the narratives being that he doesn't help players reach their peak. And I think that's true, but that's true with any player that is as good as Luca that dominates the ball. Disagree. Let me think. I would have because to think. he's he people love to throw him in that conversation of 07 LeBron. Wait, what? I heard that pretty recently on the Joel Moran show. What about Westbrook? It's reminding you of 07 LeBron in that situation, correct? Yeah, they doesn't have help, yeah. So a lot of people do like to say that Luka's play style, at least offensively, is comparable to LeBron's. Yes, correct? it is. So LeBron, since we want to associate him with the best because he is one of the best, LeBron elevates the players around him. And it leads to winning basketball. Not play, that player, Luka, players that have a certain role within the team, yes. So Luka Doncic, who we are, did he elevate who? Dwayne Wade's play? Wait, did he ev- elevate? Wade. Dude, was did he elevate Chris Bosh's play? Okay, that one you could. Did say he elevate Kevin Love's play? No. Did he elevate Kyrie Irving's? What, play? what yes. happened with Russell Westbrook when he went? Did to he elevate LA? AD's play? Wait, so can we? AD add- was an All NBA player before him. Was, w- Westbrook has elevated PG's play. How about Mo Williams? Uh, Mo Williams, correct. And when he was on the Cavaliers, did he elevate his play? Doing? I'm just saying. Mo Williams was already what he was when he went to Cleveland. To be honest. He was obviously Mo Williams was a decent ball player. Larry Hughes was a good player. Better. Larry Hughes was a good ball player for sure. Mo, Mo was a bad one. But Mo, what really was Mo? Really, same thing. He uh, before he got there, he just got had a better role. Should have said like, um, AD was a good one. Like Caruso was fine. That's another one. With the Cavs, he, he with, with Cavs, Mo, Aver- Mo averaged eighteen, and the year before he averaged seventeen. Yeah, same, same thing. All right, yeah. fine. But I think we're talking, no, we're talking there, about a different yeah, caliber. But yeah, there's no star Williams. player that LeBron has elevated. And it also there hasn't to, been that. What I meant to say is it also leads to winning basketball. When he went to and the also, Cavaliers the second has, time, and yes, he Susan, made. Because the talent Kyrie, was there. Kyrie, no, for yes. sure. Kyrie is the perfect example. Kyrie, Kyrie is. Because we're not talking Wait, about. Hold a, up. We're talking about poor Zingas. We're not talking about Reggie Bullock. His buckets were ISOs. To a degree. Yeah, but he had his best years with LeBron. Yeah, because the team was trash before that. They were horrible. And you, you, after. Should, you should have your statistically your better year when the team is trash. He was still growing into himself as a player. LeBron helped. LeBron him. got there and yeah, let him that's elevate. A part of, yeah, but like, when, but when like Kyrie, Kyrie left, Kyrie he was never Irving, the same. What do you mean, Kyrie Irving went to Boston? They were the first seed. His first year there, statistically, yes. But, but if, if you just saw Kyrie playing, his yeah. peak, I think, was on Cleveland. Bro, and in Cleveland, he averaged twenty. And in Cleveland, he averaged 25. No, statistically, the, yes. He averaged like 27. The very next year, he averaged 24 in, in that's Boston. 24. Right that's now, like, Kyrie's playing the best of his career IT right now. IT averaged more than him. Huh? The following year, IT averaged more than him. With with Boston, IT in Boston? I said IT averaged more than him. 28. IT averaged like yeah. 20. Yeah, the year in Boston, right? Yes, the yes. year before they got traded for yes, each other? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it's a different offensive system. The, the entire Boston Celtics offense was dribble handoffs for Isaiah Thomas and setting down screens from they get over from, from, from three. The offensive system in Cleveland was LeBron, then you go Kyrie. I'm saying Kyrie in Boston, IT in Boston. Oh, yeah, but now 
Kyrie what in Boston the, had Jason Tatum. What about the second year? Uh, for that was Kyrie. a rookie that yes. had to get a trade into yes, offense. I know. Gordon Hayward comes I'm just in. saying you just brought up statistically with Kyrie. But that's why when you just see him play, his peak was definitely in what Cleveland. About this? Why don't we figure out the second his, year? I'm not saying his peak wasn't in Cleveland. The well, moment that he's known Boston, for Kyrie. is a 20, 2016 yes. NBA Finals. But Kyrie, the way LeBron plays it and elevate his style, they were always ISO players. And when players that need touches go play with LeBron – they are worse. It's just a fact. I mean, the so, only two that really have gotten worse are third guy. Kevin Love and Bosh. Offensively. Yeah, Dwayne Wade guy. averaged 30 before LeBron. And he got there in that first two years. They were all world. Yeah, but you have to take a reduced role is what I'm saying. But they really sure. it, did Dwayne oh, Wade when you, really when you take play a with stars, role? you take a reduced role. D-Wade only averaged 30 because there was nobody else. That's He fact. averaged 26 it, the next year. In the finals. And only, he only fell down because his knees blew out. Correct. Listen, yeah, really this it. is all talking about Luka. Correct. Luka Doncic and the KP thing, because I hear this all the time that, oh, he took away from KP's play. KP is a player that in New York, got post touches, was able to face up a ton. And when you go play with Luka, it's pick and roll heavy. The court is spread out. He is more of a spot of a shooter. That's true. He's playing slightly better in Washington, but that's due to two things. One, he's getting a bit more touches. Mm -hmm. And two, he's healthy. Chris Porzingis, when he was with Luka in the bubble, when they faced the Clippers, I think he averaged 26 in that series. was amazing. KP was amazing. But then injuries piled up. He couldn't play defense anymore, and now he's one of the better rim protectors again in basketball and less opportunity. But most of the most of the Luka and KP dynamic was, one, due to bad fit, even though they still played well when they were together, and two, KP just wasn't able to be a consistent enough defender for them, and that's why they had to trade him. They lost hope too quickly, though. It was already a four KP? years with this, though. Yeah, with KP. It wasn't no. This was going to go into year four. Or excuse me. They traded him halfway into to last season. Yeah, but they traded him. Then once they, the but it's all due to financial flexibility. But again, who on this team in. is worthwhile that you're paying? I think I think he's saying bring people yeah, in. They paid. What they paid Bertans or they took his. No, no, they took Bertans. They contract. paid Tim Hardaway. They paid Dwight Powell. They paid Javale McGee. Where's the financial flexibility? Luca, they just gave a bunch of money. They paid the Mavericks will have money this upcoming free agency. But that most of that is due to not paying Brunson. No. I shouldn't ain't gonna be nobody. And that yo. was a mistake. It's just James Harden and Kyrie. Because this was the first time we saw Luca have that second start next to me. Went to the WCF. And as much as you want to say you give up on KP too early, which you might be right. I mean that allowed you get Dinwiddie and you bring another guard in, which you would think. WCF. And then what you Brunson, needed you know, what, what Dallas needs and this is what Luca needs. The best blueprint is the 2018 Rockets, where Harden there's this helo centric offense, but you bring in another ball handler because. Luka right now is scoring at a historic rate. Sure. The Mavericks offense with him are at a historic rate right now. All you have to do is win those non-Luka minutes, and you do that by having a ball handler play right beside him. And that was Jalen Brunson, but now Jalen Brunson is gone, so Dinwiddie gets elevated into that role. Off the bench, you don't have that. You don't have that gap, and that's what they're missing right now. But Luka, he need, the role players he needs is players that – can accept a reduced role while also being knocked down shooters. Like, I think a perfect player would be Chris Middleton on Dallas. Like, Chris Middleton is the prototype where he can handle responsibilities in a pick and roll. He's a great spot up shooter. He can hit clutch shots. So That's what Dallas needs. It's like, let's just listen to these losses from the Mavs. Suns after being up 22. Pelicans without Zion, Ingram, Herb Jones. Thunder after being up 16 with four minutes remaining. Magic without Paolo. Wizards without KP or Beal. Lost to the Rockets. Nuggets without Jokic, Murray, or Aaron Gordon. Bucks. Lost to the Celtics, which is fine, obviously. The Raptors without Pascal or Scotty. Lost to the Bucks. That's respectful. And lost to the Pistons without Cade. Let, let's just be really brutally honest. Luka is one of the best in the league, a top five player in the NBA. He is all world. He's a generational talent. It can also still mean that the Mavericks are bad. Unrealistic fit, Pascal Siakam, Luka. That would, that would be, be fantastic. Tough. Yeah, yeah, that would they, yeah, that would be amazing for them. I've been it's crazy because I've been saying this about Dallas for a minute, you said and, it no, for a and nobody's year. been listening. That's a hey, yeah, nobody's been listening. A good one Facts. for one year. Relax. Whoa, whoa. Let him take his, I mean, I've been because you know I'm me, Luca with Tatum. You know, so I've always had my little. Jabs what about on you Luka. with Dallas? That this this team is never going to be able to reach that height the way it's constructed with just Luca and nobody else. And no, everyone, listen, like you said, Drew Luca is top three in the league. He's unbelievable, but everybody needs help. No matter if you're, no matter who you are, you're going to need help at some point. And it's hard to see a second all-star come in 
and produce at the same level they would. Like oh. if Jalen Brown went to Dallas, he's not averaging 26, 27. He's, he's not, averaging 23. Yeah, he, his his game gets put down and Ooh. not JB. Oh. Like he's not doing what he's doing this year. And that's with Tatum still getting his own. I mean, it's, it's different still systems, obviously. It depends. Maybe. I mean, if the offense is just Luka and JB, then yeah, he can get, he can get to 25. That's cool. Probably not. No, it's, you know, no, it's different. You give him Tatum those, gets you, guys involved. Who? Tatum. Gets what? His guys involved. That's because he has guys Luka's to get involved. Luka's a better playmaker than Tatum, so that's oh, a moot point. Depends. He has guys to Hey, Cardinal OG, can defense go matters. Get one. So I'm balls. He needs a transition. Yeah, oh, yeah, smart I mean, to yes. a degree, can go get yeah, one. Yeah, no. right. he, has, he definitely has better playmakers. And there's also another narrative about Luka being a poor defender. While he's not great laterally in the perimeter, this year, 1.8 steals is a career high, fourth highest mark in the league. He's tied for seventh in deflections per game. And he's also an excellent defensive rebounder. 7.9 defensive rebounds a game. So defensively, he's not as bad as people would like to make him out to be. And how desperate was that Kemba signing? That made just... How does that help in any way? Like, I get get another ball handler, but Kemba? Go get Eric Gordon. No disrespect to Kemba, but... Go get Eric Gordon. They can't. You're right. The Mavs have nothing they can trade. You're right. Bullock in two seconds. I'm just throwing shit out there. To be honest with you. Shit. If you trade a first for Eric Gordon, you're, you're, you're down done. bad. You're, you're so down <laughs> bad. <laughs>